Hey everyone, I am Dr. Ozama Odwa from Physics Department, University of Lagos. I will be describing the experiment to determine the internal resistance of a cell using the potential data circuit. Let me just show the apparatus for this experiment. We have a rheostat, which is a variable resistor, by moving the adjustable contact or wiper, we can adjust the resistance of the real, real start. Then we have a dry cell. It's very important that the dry cell is connected in such a manner that the negative will be connected to the uh, uh, real start while the positive is connected to the key. Then we have a key here. I call this one my K1. The K1 will be connected to the potentiometer and then from the potentiometer to the wet cell. This is a Leclerc cell. The middle electrode is the positive while the other one at the side is the negative electrode. Then I have resistors which I'm going to connect in series to add up. Then I have another key. I call this one my K2. No, by pulling off the key, I have left the key open circuit. Now, if I close it up, the key is now closed and connection established. I have a galvanometer, which I'm going to use to check the direction of flow of current. Then I have the potentiometer. You can see the constantan wire on the potentiometer is quite is lying on top of the meter rule. So by touching the potentiometer, the constantan wire with my jockey, I can actually determine the direction of flow of current on the constantan wire. This is the schematic diagram for the experiment. Notice the connection. So here I have already connected the apparatus. I have my real start connected to the cell, the dry cell, to the negative part of the dry cell. Then from the positive, it's connected to my K1. From my K1, it's connected to my potentiometer. From my potentiometer, it's connected to the wet cell. That is my Leclerc cell. Then from my Leclerc cell, I have connected to my resistors in series. Here I have three ohms resistor and four ohms resistor. That means I have seven ohms connected in series. Then from my resistors is connected to my K2, my key, my second key. And from K2 is connected to my galvanometer. And from my galvanometer, I have it connected to my jockey which I will use to determine the direction of flow or current. So, before I start, I have to check and be sure the direction of flow of the current. And to do that, first of all, I have to close my key. So I've closed my K1, I've closed my K2. So first of all, let me determine the direction of flow of current by looking at my galvanometer and then touching the constantan wire. You can see that it has deflected to the right. So I will try from the other side. You can see that it has deflected to the left. The next thing I have to do is to determine where the galvanometer will be at the middle while I touch the constantan wire. So let's see how it goes. Here we go. So you can see that the galvanometer is at zero. So I will take my reading on the meter rule that is attached to the potentiometer. So at this point, I can see that it's 17, 17 cm. So I will go to my table and record my L1 and the values of my L2. 
Now, as I record the value of my L1, it must be to one decimal point. All my measurements, all my measured values must be to decimal place of one decimal place. While the derived or the calculated readings must be to three decimal points. So you can see it, I have my L1, my L2, then my L1 over L2, my R, and then my the inverse of R, which is R raised to power minus 1. Now, for me to understand what I have to plot, I have to linearize this equation. You can see that the equation of the internal resistance is given as small r is equal to big R into L1 minus L2 all over L2. So if you linearize it, you have that y is equal to mx plus c. Now, you can see that we are, what we will have on the y-axis will be uh, 1 over r, big R, while what we will have on the um, x-axis will be uh, L1 over L2. So, we will now go ahead and plot L1 uh, over r on the y-axis, and then our L1 over L2 on the x-axis. So this is the graph. It is a linear graph. And the gradient of that graph, the inverse of the gradient of the graph will give us the internal resistance that we are measuring. So in performing this experiment, we need to comply with some precautions. And these are the precautions. Now, it's very important that we check our continuity during our connections. Because if we don't check continuity, we might have open circuit. And once there's an open circuit, by the time we check on our galvanometer, we will not be getting the right deflection. So for us to check if there's an open circuit, we have to put the multimeter on the continuity mode. And once I place my probes between the terminals that I want to check, it will be. Did you hear that? So that tells me now that there is no open circuit. Again, it's also important that E1, which is the dry cell, is higher than the E2, which is my Leclerc cell. So I have to also measure the value of my E1. And to do that, I will have to put the multimeter on the voltage mode and then measure. So now I have my 2.4, 2.5 on my dry cell. So I have 2.5 volts on my dry cell. Now let's check the wet cell. The wet cell I have uh, 0 0.52 volts. So you can see that my E1 is greater than my E2. So I've succeeded in determining the internal resistance of the cell. And like I said, that this is very relevant because if we reduce the internal resistance of the cell, we will be able to enhance the efficiency of the cell. Thank you.